Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the world through the lens of astrology. And if you're here, then you're either already experimenting with or you're curious about, or you know that there's something to astrology or that there's something more to this world than meets the eye. Maybe you're new to the idea of astrology or you just appreciate the stars for their beauty. I don't know pretty much anyone who can look up at the sky and think that it's anything short of staggering, all of that light and energy and expansiveness out there. Well, this show is me sharing nine years plus of studies of astrology for the benefit of you trying it out and seeing if it resonates with you, taking my years of research, work and qualification and translating it for everyday use. I save you the confusion of wading through the astrological documents and discussions out there in the world and floating around the internet. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for Radio's The Bob and Cherry Show. This episode you're listening to right here is the week ahead forecast for the week beginning Monday, November 4th. And the main transits, there's just two main transits, really are the Sun in Scorpio trine a retrograde Saturn in Pisces, which is just turning your attention to responsibility, as well as the kind of second biggest one is Venus in Sagittarius square, a retrograde Neptune in Pisces, which might bring forth a little bit of disappointment. The deeper explanations of these themes, plus a look at the moon's movements too. The moon will be moving through Sagittarius, Capricorn and Aquarius this week. So learn what all of that means right here. So this week's episodes will be today's regular weekly forecast, plus I'll be pivoting back into medical astrology and wellness astrology too. Getting straight to it, the upcoming lunar influence this week reads as the moon transit through Sagittarius, which is just expansion, adventure and some enthusiasm, but then that quickly wears out when on Tuesday the moon transit through Capricorn a place where it's very uncomfortable. The moon rules Cancer, which is the opposite sign to Capricorn. So this suggests uncomfortable feelings. It's uncomfortable government, because Capricorn is a sign related to the government. And moon is just not at home there. And that's, I think, a little bit more than coincidental that it's happening on November 5th, that the moon switches into uncomfortable Capricorn at least uncomfortable for the moon. But on a personal level, it's about discomfort in discipline and ambition. Maybe you've agreed to do something that you don't want to do, and now you feel like you have to do, and it's quite exhausting. And then from Thursday, the moon begins its transit through Aquarius, which emphasises innovation and vision. Now, outside of those general themes, these transits will mean slightly different developments based on your sign and that's going to be included in the horoscope readings that follow this main kind of week ahead outlook but the big transits this week speak of responsibility followed by disappointment the sun in scorpio trying a retrograde saturn in pisces opening the week is about feeling more disciplined more practical and the moon is in sagittarius so you feel positive about this and you're okay about turning up to your responsibilities simply because You understand that the outcome on the end of turning up to those responsibilities is an expansion of your horizons. It's the simple equation that if you do the thing, then it gets you further. So you might start by excitably figuring out deadlines. And this is generally all about getting things done. Putting a plan together is so important at the start of the week. Putting together a plan, not just for the week, but a long-term, long-view plan. Take the things you're currently doing, the things you want to be focused on, and build a bigger awareness pattern around that. This is kind of the old traditional concept of setting SMART goals. Be specific. Make sure the goals are relevant. And, you know, assign a timeline. And the timeline to work with best right now is anywhere between one and seven years. 
and then break those years down into smaller increments of actionable steps. For example, if your goal is something to do with your career, then set three or six month targets based on skill development, particularly skills that will help you make, you know, those big goals feel more achievable. What you set in motion from Monday, Tuesday this week will make it through. What you plan Monday or Tuesday of this week will have more chance of developing just the way you envision it as long as you set aside the time on Monday or Tuesday to make this plan firmly. Don't leave it till the end of the week. Other stuff comes up. The drive, the ability to see, it fades as the week goes on. Monday's air is really just ripe for establishing the framework of the things that you know you need to do. And where this shows up, what that framework is based on, what you are planning, is really going to depend on your individual zodiac sign, which will be in the reading section. The other main aspect this week, and really the week is just focused around two, there are moon aspects, and I'll update gently on those, but I kind of covered those in the feel of how the week progresses, and your individual sign also goes into that, but the biggest notable second point of the week is Venus in Sagittarius square, a retrograde Neptune in Pisces. These two aspects, the Sun, Trine, Saturn, Venus, square, Neptune, kind of bookend the week. So Monday, Tuesday is all about deliberate, thoughtful preparation, and then the end of the week is when things slide into disappointment. The Venus in Sagittarius square retrograde Neptune and Pisces aspect is a lot of hope that can turn into seeing good in people or seeing good in situations that actually isn't there. You know how like you see the best in someone even when they're behaving their worst or you see the good in some other kind of shoddy situation that in fact is bad and it's meant to be bad it's meant to be that way it's just a crisis of sorts and maybe you're glossing over a matter or you thought something was getting better and it was improving and then towards the end of this week the reality of that comes falling back down to earth the reality of how being open to change is very sweet but accepting that things might not be as you dreamed or hoped them to be, you saw more than meets the eye. You saw a best case scenario. And if it's a deal breaker that it's not going to be this best case scenario situation, then it might be time to throw in the towel. On the contrary, if you can strike yourself with an iron of reality and say to yourself, it is what it is, it's not turning out to be the potential that you saw in the person or the activity or the opportunity. The choice is that you see something in its stark reality or you just keep yourself a little delulu still that it's going to improve because you're going to hold on to that hope that it might get better. And it doesn't mean that it will improve just because you can envision it, but you may choose to live in that space in your mind if it's easier than the current change that would be required in confronting the facts. This could show up in financial matters. You're not likely to get what you pay for. You pay over the odds for things. Everything costs more than expected. Be aware of that towards the end of the week. And, you know, unless you're particularly vigilant with money and spending, then you might wind up feeling swindled or, you know, kind of done out of some cash. Any tension between what you hope to see in relationships or in money versus what is actually there. This week's biggest finishing aspect takes a passionate, optimistic approach and it clouds it with a fog of illusion, forcing you to make a choice. You can choose to stay stuck in it, to see only what you wish for or dream about. Or you can be open to reality as it is, 
you can have a mini crisis about it and then re-emerge from the said crisis, ready to figure out logically what you're going to do about this situation. So remember this week, as the moon goes from optimism to drudgery, to having to reframe your future vision because something didn't go the dreamy way you had planned out in your head, or because you signed up to something more than you wanted to be signed up for, or because the recent respite of positivity rebounds back to a place less positive. It's all about learning from this experience to use moving forward. And depending on how these things show up, it's going to be different for each sign. You do get to choose how to manage it. This week is really perfect for snapping out of it, snapping back to reality, which can be a positive if you've been sick. This is a from sickness to wellness kind of transit too. Or if you know that you've got lazy, if you've caught yourself being lazy and you've been off your game. Reflect on where you've been holding on to an idealised vision instead of facing the facts. Where you're going from hazy to clear. Looking at what parts of your life are you clinging to for its potential while ignoring the reality that's right in front of you. Take a moment to consider how acknowledging things just as they are could really empower you to make more grounded decisions. And if you're ready to experience a more personalised forecast, date-specific events to expect, if you're ready to kick the element of surprise to the curb, then below is my calendar. Go ahead and choose a date and time that suits you. We can connect over video chat. And let's fire up and format what is going on in your next era. For that, you can just click the link below. Each horoscope is timestamped in the descriptions too, for your convenience. For Aries this week, the moon is transiting through your 9th, 10th and 11th houses. This is an urge for expansion and adventure, and it's coupled with this focus on long-term goals. This is knuckling down and deciding what to do, your career or your working situation. And the sun in Scorpio trine harmoniously with retrograde Saturn in Pisces. Attention shifts to setting serious, achievable career goals. And you need to get really specific about what you want now. Because just floating around and letting things be as they are will not do any longer. This week is about laying the groundwork toward professional advancement. So setting a one to five year goal. You can do seven years, but I think in the kind of airy scheme of things, a one to five year goal is best. Being very specific about the outcome that you want. Maybe start with how much money you want to earn. And be aware that the Venus in Sagittarius square, retrograde Neptune in Pisces aspect, might start out initially with these grand, wishful thinking perspectives, particularly in financial matters. It's like the appeal of big opportunities, the appeal of big money, might cloud your judgment. And it makes it easy to ignore practical considerations. It makes it difficult to make these practical goals because you have experienced you know an amazing income before an income that's almost too good to be true and you're expecting that level out of a new development or a new pivot and this is not to say don't dream it's just don't let dreams of growth distract you from the value of stability and keep your eyes wide open to financial opportunities, but also don't overspend this week. Plan for a bit of a buffer while your job and working world changes in front of you. And that way you'll maintain your level of life's comfort during this shifting time of professional reorientation. And get more from your reading by checking out the reading for your Earth sign. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it, and for you this is Libra. And then your soul sign, which is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. This is said to be when your soul path is chosen. It's that last trimester before your arrival, coincidentally, when they say everything begins to switch on, the consciousness. And also listen to the reading for your moon sign and your rising sign too. If you don't know what those are, use the calculator below to find out.
Taurus, this week with the moon transit through your 8th, 9th and 10th houses, you might feel the intense transformation happening and it's followed by this yearning to expand your knowledge. You shift in focus towards your career ambitions. You want to use things that you know in a way to pave your future. And early in the week, you might confront some unspoken matters in a relationship or maybe a financial entanglement. And as the moon progresses through those houses, you could explore perspectives that lead to growth. You might have a conversation where you learn something about someone else and whether it's good or bad, this is information that you can use. It's also information that might actually impact you in your travels or your studies or just initiating a very philosophical shift. The sun in Scorpio trine retrograde Saturn in Pisces is encouraging you to set these smart long-term goals regarding education, travel, or legal issues. If you're already in a course of study, then kind of map out the path after you finish. And that might seem like it's like crazy far ahead to be thinking, but it's not. That time will come around sooner than you realise. Take advantage of the time now, and future you will be happy that you did this. Make plans about the moves that you would like to make after the current contract ends or the study finishes or the travel comes to a close. The key to transitioning from acquiring a skill to professional use of that skill is all in the planning. And at the end of the week, Venus in Sagittarius squares retrograde Neptune in Pisces. This is a reality check in how you relate to others and also how others perceive you. And you might realize that you attract people who project onto you a lot. And you might also project onto other people too. That could be expecting of them what you know that you're willing to give. But all of this projection back and forth, whether, you know, it's caring projection or the projection of someone else's problems, it could cloud your interactions. This energy means that this week it is essential for you to maintain boundaries, especially in romantic personal business relationships. Stay grounded and avoid getting swept up in any fantasies that may not hold up under scrutiny. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign opposite yours on the wheel. The sign earth was in when you were born. And this is for Scorpio. And then also the reading for your soul sign. The soul sign is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. So it's that final trimester when consciousness is said to begin. It's when your life path is chosen. And for you, this is Aquarius. And then listen to the readings for your rising sign and your moon sign too. If you don't know what those are, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Gemini, the moon moves through your 7th, 8th and ninth houses. So this is the progress from partnerships to intense linked kind of shared situations and transformation and then to a little bit of freedom. So you might actually be spending too much time with some people and you need a bit of a break from that by the end of the week. So it starts out with really deep connections. Maybe you're on top of someone else. You are just completely immersed in life with another. And this is great for reflecting on what you truly need from the people that you spend time with. But as the moon progresses through the eighth house and you crave some maybe private time or inner transformation, then you might release some of those connections. You might turn off notifications, go onto focus mode on your phone. And by the week's end, you probably just need a break from everyone to travel, read a book, lose your mind in something, literature, anything other than conversation and connection with other people. The sun in Scorpio trines Saturn retrograde in Pisces. Monday, Tuesday, this emphasizes smart, practical goals to be made concerning your daily habits, your work and your health. 
but you might be prone to procrastination from that. So make sure you do schedule, you know, regular breaks, ways to maintain your energy, some reset time. Instead of pushing through a very long kind of intense to-do list, allow yourself time to recharge. And this will lead to much more sustainable progress when you return to your task. Later on, Venus in Sagittarius, square retrograde Neptune in Pisces, is a heightened sensitivity in your interactions. And so this kind of comes back to dealing with other people. You might have spent time with not just people that you know you already know, but people who don't have the best intentions. People who are emotional or even financial drained. Be cautious of letting untoward people take advantage of you during this week. And when you've had enough, say you've had enough, break away and go spend time alone. Remember that it is okay and actually probably necessary this week for you to set some really solid boundaries. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. This is just the sign earth was in when you were born on it. For you, this is Sagittarius. And then also the reading for your soul sign. So the soul sign is said to be the sign that the sun was in three months or 88 days before you were born. It's kind of the last trimester. It's said to be when consciousness switches on. And it's the point at which your life path is determined. And for you, this sign is Pisces. And also listen to the reading for your moon sign and your rising sign. And if you don't know what those are, Use the calculator in the show notes below to find out. This week for Cancer, the moon's journey through your 6th, 7th and 8th house brings focus from your daily work and your wellness to the connections you have with other people to deep personal transformation. So you might begin by prioritising health. You might become aware of new organisation needed in your routines or, you know, small adjustments that you need to make to feel a little bit better. And then as the moon enters your seventh house, there's a stronger happening, a stronger pull towards partnerships. So you can use this time to nurture the close relationships to build new connections and also take any well-needed distance from some difficult ones. And then as the moon moves into your eighth house, you might feel drawn to some introspection. You might need to journal. You might need to handle the resources that you share in connection with someone else. You might need to meditate, detox. But in general, this week with the sun in Scorpio trine, Saturn retrograde in Pisces, it's a great time to plan goals, smart goals. This could be business and personal. And it's specifically to do with relationships. A relationship can be a business relationship, an agreement, a connection, a contract. What are you getting paid? What do you get in return for your services? Figuring out what you get back for your offerings takes on a serious practical tone. Creating smart goals around that allows you to align with others who not only share your values, but value what you share. So take this opportunity at the start of the week to think about something that you've entered into that might be a collaborative effort and how it looks for that to benefit you long term. Be really specific about the hours you want to give and what you want to get back for those hours. When Venus in Sagittarius squares retrograde Neptune in Pisces, this signals some potential illusions with friendships. You might be seeing someone incorrectly. You might be idealizing new friends. You might be misinterpreting their intentions. This could be as much thinking that someone is more this or more that than they actually are. You might compare them to you. But this is also incorrectly taking somebody else's kind of emotions or sentiments that they are going through and personalizing them, thinking that you are the reason for whatever it is that they are struggling with. 
everybody kind of has this point of personal crisis right now. Yours is yours, theirs is theirs. There is nothing shared about that. So trust new connections. Allow yourself to take time. Any new connections are not going to be, you know, perfect straight away. So take your time in letting them develop. Don't rush into requiring deepening bonds or, you know, better agreements until you have a clear sense of who they truly are and also until we are out of this Neptune in the crisis degree phase. In the situation of these new collaborations, time takes time. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. It's the sign that Earth was in when you were born on it. In heliocentric models of astrology, the Earth sign is exactly opposite the Sun sign. So that means your Earth sign is Capricorn. And then the Sol sign is simply the sign that the Sun was in three months before you were born. The final trimester, which is said to be when the consciousness switches on or the lights switch on. This is when your life path gets confirmed. And for you, this is the sign of Aries. Listening to those are going to give you a more rounded reading, as well as the readings for your moon and your rising signs too. And if you don't know what your moon and rising signs are, use the calculator below to find out. For Leo this week, as the moon moves through your fifth and sixth and seventh houses. So you'll experience the shift from creative pursuits and and having fun and some hobbies, to being more healthy, more organized, and then pushing through to partnerships and collaboration. So early in the week, immerse yourself in expression and creativity. Maybe you have something to attend. Maybe there's something fun going on. It's your time to shine, enjoy hobbies, connect with children if that's relevant. And then with, and then midweek, the focus shifts to your routines and wellness. So perhaps it's a kind of hurrah or a shindig at the start of the week and then you get down to it. More health, more gym, more time to schedule wellness practices, to reorganize your workspace. And then by the weekend, the emphasis is on relationships, prompting you to kind of seek harmony and deeper understanding with someone. Maybe a particular relationship comes up specifically for you to collaborate within. The Sun in Scorpio trying retrograde Saturn in Pisces is all about setting goals. It's that tending to responsibility. This is in work and health. So you might need to set some smart goals with regards to a fitness plan. How long you want to put in at the gym? How many days a week do you want to go to the gym? How many days a week do you want to meditate? What's your hygiene routine look like? What's your diet look like? This is meal planning. And this is not just in your health and wellness. This is also... In work, you might have to commit to certain hours or a certain schedule. But if you're looking to advance professionally, consider how stepping up to this will showcase your dedication. It shows other people how responsibly you take your work. And with your health, there's nothing better than dedicating to yourself. Venus in Sagittarius square, Neptune retrograde in Pisces is very great for music and art. I mean, if you're a performer or you have some kind of artistic outlet, then getting lost in that is great, but other people might see that as you wasting time. If you are not in a creative field, if you're very, very non-creative, which is also okay, then this might indicate just general uncertainty in your career direction, whether you're creative or not. The illusion seems to show up professionally and you might find that it's difficult to define your role and that you've actually been behaving in a way where other people have been placing you in a box or deciding what you do or deciding who you are and it's now you realise that those labels don't fit. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it in heliocentric astrology models. The Earth sign is just 180 degrees directly opposite your Sun sign, so for you, this is Aquarius. And then there's the reading for your Sol sign. This is the sign the Sun was in three months before you were born. This is when 
this is the third trimester when they say all of the consciousness begins to switch on and it's when your soul path is chosen and for you this sign is Taurus and also listen to the reading for your moon sign and your rising signs too if you don't know what those are use the calculators below to find out This week for Virgo, as the moon transits through your 4th, 5th and 6th houses, this is starting out as a focus on home, followed by creativity, followed by health, wellness and daily routines. So early in the week, home and family matters are centre stage. This is great for connecting with loved ones or just organising your personal space. And then you probably want some fun after that, this as the moon moves through to your fifth house, this is about kind of letting your hair down after putting in some effort. Creativity and self-expression are key. This is good for diving into hobbies. And then by the weekend, the focus shifts to health and daily tasks. And then by the weekend, you get back on the wagon. You probably have a lot of work to do. And the focus shifts to maintaining this good balance between your to-do list and your self-care list. The sun in Scorpio trying Saturn retrograde in Pisces is a strategic focus to your relationships. There might be a relationship that needs to be assessed in terms of, is this going to go the distance? This is looking at matters of commitment and investment. And if it's not a personal relationship, it might be a contractual relationship. If you are in a romantic connection it's a great time to clarify your intentions. Make sure you and the other person are on the same page. This might also show up in finances. So consider some long-term planning rather than short-term gains where you prioritise going the distance with a financial investment. And then when Venus in Sagittarius squares retrograde Neptune in Pisces, be careful with travel or legal matters. You know, going away, having some fun, letting your hair down, a little trip. Anything like that might seem appealing. But, you know, if you do travel this weekend, things might not go as planned. Or if it is about legal advice and paperwork, then the details of that might be misleading. So double check any information before making decisions, contractual decisions that could impact your future. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. In heliocentric models of astrology, this is the sign opposite yours. So this makes your Earth sign Pisces. And then the Sol sign, which is the sign the sun was in three months before you were born. The third trimester is said to be when everything begins to switch on, the lights switch on. And also when your life path develops. And for you, the sign is Gemini. And also listen to the reading for your moon and rising signs too. If you don't know what those are, use the calculators below to find out. This week for Libra, the moon transits your third, fourth and fifth houses and you're encouraged to focus on communication. Making sure you're saying how you feel, there might be an emotional conversation that comes up. And then it is all about your home life. So maybe this emotional conversation is with a family member. The end result is really ultimate self-expression. So early in the week, connect with your immediate environment, reach out to friends, engage in conversations. Midweek, those conversations to family. This might be about discussing a family trip, a trip to see family or a trip away from family. And then by the weekend, creativity and fun and joy moving forward, take the spotlight. Maybe these plans or this trip that you're planning just becomes super exciting. The sun in Scorpio trines Saturn in Pisces, which is retrograde emphasizes drawing strength from your heritage, where you came from. Making smart plans is about planning to be more like or less like your family or your place of origin. This week really reminds you of the importance of tradition, but more importantly, what you get to choose to bring with you from tradition. Relationships with family members might improve, you might make a conscious effort for this. You might be doing the extra hard work where somebody else isn't capable of doing so. You know, being the bigger person. And a greater sense of satisfaction emerges 
as you tap into your roots and your ability to be mature. But then Venus in Sagittarius, a square retrograde Neptune in Pisces warns against new financial arrangements. Maybe something seems too good to be true. Maybe you've got this idea of something and you're about to find out it's not as you envisioned with regards to earning potential. If this is about credit, then it's probably that the repayment percentage is too high. If it's about a job or something freelance, then the kickback that you have to pay is more than you thought. It's just an indication to read the fine print. Make sure you're not getting the raw end of a deal. And it's also a warning to not be impulsive with spending that could strain your budget. So definitely stay mindful of financial limits. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. In heliocentric astrology, this is just a sign opposite yours on the wheel. So for you, this is Aries. And then consider listening to the reading for your Earth sign too. This is the sign the sun was in. Three months before you were born, the final trimester, when everything is said to be switching on. This is when the life path is confirmed. And for you, this sign is Cancer. And then also listen to the reading for your moon and rising signs too. These are two very important signs of the wheel. These make up the big three in astrology, as they say. And if you don't know what the moon and rising signs are in your chart, then use the calculator below to find out. This week for Scorpio, the moon's movements through your second, third and fourth house, or the second, third and fourth sign from yours. And it brings focus to finances, communication, and then home. So early in the week, you're going to be reviewing your spending habits, considering financial planning for the future. And then as the moon enters your third house midweek, you might engage in meaningful conversations about this. You might educate yourself financially. You might learn a few tips and tricks on how to make the most of your money. And then by the week's end, the moon in your fourth house brings your attention to home. So it's a great time to relax and connect with family or at home on your own, in your own space. It might be spending a little bit of money, you know, sprucing up where you live. And the main aspects, the sun in your sign Scorpio, trine retrograde Saturn in Pisces, put you in this natural position of leadership. These smart plans, these long-term plans, are about your perspective in becoming a guide or a mentor. It's about looking at how others seek your guidance or they seek your advice. Where do others seek your guidance and advice? Because knowing that can help you set in motion this plan of how to use that more, how to lean into your mentorship abilities. Like what is it that you can teach other people? Because Planning to do that long term is a great way to not only give back and provide valuable guidance, but it's a great way to earn income and also create good karma. So set a kind of smart goal that revolves around sharing skills that you have, putting yourself in a position of leadership, sharing with a community or a specific network. The things that you know others seek your help with. Venus in Sagittarius square retrograde Neptune in Pisces means towards the end of the week you need to be cautious of idealizing a relationship. There might be distance in a relationship and you are subsequently feeling uncomfortable about that. This might be distance that you've created or distance that's just there. You might not be seeing the true potential of a relationship. Or you might be idealizing it. It's one end or the other. It's either perfect in your eyes when it really isn't. Or it's not perfect enough in your eyes where looking for perfection is creating some distance between you and someone you actually care about. Try and view other people with clarity. Avoid rushing into decisions. Whether it's to commit more or detach in commitments, because all of these decisions might be based currently on unrealistic expectations. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. 
in the heliocentric model of astrology, this is just the sign opposite yours. So for you, this is Taurus. And then there is the reading for your soul sign. This is the sign three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. It's in that final trimester when all the lights begin switching on and consciousness develops. And for you, this sign is Leo. And then, of course, listen to the reading for your moon and earth signs too. If you don't know what those are, use the calculators below to find out. This week for Sagittarius, the moon transits your first, second and third houses. So it starts with this pull of self-image, progresses through to financial priorities, and then finishes in the area of communication. So early in the week, it's a burst of confidence. It's either natural energy or the need to dig deep to get energy. It's a great time for setting personal goals, trying new activities, expressing yourself. And then as the moon shifts into your second house, money matters take the spotlight. So you can reassess how you can better align your financial goals, make sure that your money is doing the best that it can for you. And then by the time the moon moves through to your third house, Thursday onwards, you'll crave stimulation. This is conversation, this is text messages, this is all kinds of back and forth. You might rely heavily on the internet at this time. It just makes it a great time to connect with people or to dive into learning something new. When the sun in Scorpio trines retrograde Saturn in Pisces, this is about setting serious intentions around your home life and or emotional foundations. So this alignment is about establishing long-term security. This is financial planning for your home and your future. This is about restructuring your family dynamic. This is about overcoming stressful family situations by making long-term plans based on how your home life makes you feel. If this isn't an emotionally safe space that you live in, if family or home, it, it just doesn't feel safe, doesn't support your ambitions, then Saturn's kind of grounding influence is going to make sure that you focus on change, use this smart goal process to plan when you want to change that situation. Make realistic and sustainable plans moving forward. Think about where you want to live or how you want your family dynamic to look in the next five years. And with Venus in Sagittarius, your sign, squaring off with Neptune retrograde in Pisces, this is just the traditional wearing rose-coloured glasses when it comes to a relationship. And again, this might point to family. Maybe you're ignoring someone's terrible behavior maybe you're ignoring someone's manipulation their lies this is something that hits really close to home for you and yet you're the positive sign on the wheel so you're tempted to see the best in everybody but not all of your ability to see the potential is grounded in reality so misunderstandings could arise the more that you ignore red flags or the more that you overlook other people's poor, terrible behaviour towards you. Take a moment to question anyone who's appearing to be too good to be true. Fake, overly sweet, especially in family dynamics or romantic interests. And make sure that you connect and make decisions to connect or disconnect from a clear-headed space. And to get more from your reading, listen to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign earth was in when you were born on it. In heliocentric astrology, this is the sign opposite yours on the wheel. So for you, this is Gemini. And then there's the reading for your soul sign. It's a sign three months before you were born. It's said to be when your soul path developed. It's the final trimester before you arrive, when everything switches on, all the lights switch on. And for you, this soul sign is Virgo. And then, of course, the moon and rising signs, which are very important too. And if you don't know what your moon and rising signs are, Use the calculator below to find out. This week for Capricorn, the moon transiting your 12th and then your 1st and then your 2nd houses. It brings a mixture of introspection, self-focus and financial awareness. So earlier in the week, 
the Toth house influence of the moon is very introspective and withdrawn. Maybe you're less outgoing, less communicative than you have been. Maybe there's more focus on sleep, more need for sleep. You should use this time for rest and reflection. It's great for journaling, meditation, just quietly processing your thoughts. And then when the moon moves into your first house, the moon in Capricorn isn't the most comfortable anyway. You do feel more confident. It's better for you than it is for any other sign. You do feel more confident, but this might be taken incorrectly by other people. For you yourself, it's a great time to focus on self-presentation. You might actually have a presentation to be uh, kind of getting ready. It's good for you setting intentions for the coming month. And then as the moon shifts into your second house towards the end of the week, Thursday onwards, financial concerns, material stability, things like that take center stage. So it's a great time to check in on budget or to just set some savings goals. It's a great moment to get excited about your financial future too. The sun in Scorpio trine retrograde Saturn in Pisces. It's a strong focus on communication and learning. So setting, creating these long-term goals might surround some education or skill development plans. In fact, skill development could open more doors professionally. You might have to be really rigid setting some boundaries with colleagues, friends, family, just people. This helps you make sure that you spend your time and mental energy correctly, that these things are invested wisely. Almost like there's not much time this week, but the better you use it, the more you get out of it. Your plans going forward, this one to seven year outlook, is about where you want to see yourself, but also where you want to see yourself in relationships, in regards to other people, in a partnership, in an agreement. The start of the week encourages you to set goals that align with your practical needs and a deeper purpose, either romantically or professionally, or maybe even both. But then with Venus in Sagittarius squaring off Neptune retrograde in Pisces, there could be a risk of some self-deception something that you're trying to convince yourself is or isn't there, something that you're trying to turn away from and ignore. But the truth is, it's very difficult to ignore. There are some subconscious or hidden influences in your life you might be trying to press down, underplaying them, thinking that they're not as important as they are. Or the opposite, you might be thinking something is far more important than it actually is. Be mindful of where your imagination leads you. Maybe it leads you astray and try to keep your expectations grounded. If you're considering any kind of major changes or investments, take a moment to review the details, especially if they seem too good to be true. And with money or love, don't ignore the facts. They might be slightly veiled towards the end of the week, but I'm sure by the beginning of next week-ish, they'll be right back staring you in the face again. And to get more from your reading, combine this reading with the reading for your earth sign and your soul sign. So the earth sign is the sign that earth was in when you were born on it, to put it simply. And in heliocentric model astrology, the earth sign is the sign opposite yours on the wheel. So for you, this is cancer. And then the soul sign is said to be the sign of the development of consciousness, the sign that confirms your life path. It's the sign the sun was in three months or 88 days-ish before you were born, the third trimester when everything begins to switch on, and for you this sign is Libra. And of course add on to that the reading for your moon sign and your rising sign too. It's a mind-blowing well-rounded outlook for your week, and if you don't know your moon sign or your rising sign, then use the calculator below to find out. This week for Aquarius, the moon transiting your 11th, 12th and 1st houses is this journey from social engagement, you know, being out there, putting yourself out there, straight into introspection, coming away from being out there, and then some self-focus. So early in the week, you're immersed in more group activities. 
new people, new friendships, you know, old people, old friendships, but just this networking group oriented environment. Networking is actually favored and you get some insights from hanging out with other people. But then midweek, enough is enough and a more reflective energy sets in. So this is a great time to step back and recharge. You'll want to get better sleep. Make sure you're taking care of your sleep. Good sleep hygiene. And then you step out into the spotlight again. So by the weekend, the moon in your first house. It allows you to take centre stage and make a strong impression. The sun in Scorpio trying retrograde Saturn in Pisces encourages a long-term goal setting. And this is in career and finances. You might want to begin working on a project that significantly impacts your life. Or you might want to set smart goals on a project that you've already been working on. You know, something that's been in motion for a while and it's just been floating along and now it needs some better structure. You want to look at how something that you're doing long term in the future can be financially viable for the long term in the future. This is about finding stability. And with Saturn's influence, there's a grounding element to turning your dreams into realistic goals. So this is just focusing on that one to seven year in the future projection, looking at where do you want to be professionally in the coming years, and then map out the steps that you need to take to get there. With Venus in Sagittarius squaring off Neptune retrograde in Pisces, be very wary of over-idealizing friendships. And if it's not friendships, it's a social opportunity. You might be tempted to go out and party, there might be an invitation, it seems really fun and it turns out to not be fun at all. There's this rosy view that clouds your judgement. Maybe you say yes to an invitation to something and later wish you hadn't. Or maybe the opposite, maybe you say no and later wish you did go. But it shows up particularly in group settings or collaborations that... Something won't be as fun as you initially think it will be. So if something sounds too good to be true, take a step back, assess the situation carefully. Maybe choose privacy and self-care over socialising and networking this week. And that will just help you avoid any potential excessive spending for one, but also social disappointments too. And to get more from your reading, consider listening to the reading for your earth sign. It's the sign Earth was in when you were born on it. And in heliocentric astrology, it's the sign opposite yours on the wheel. Your Earth sign is Leo. And then there's the reading for your soul sign, which is the sign three months before you were born, 88 days before you were born. This is said to be when everything's, all the lights are switching on. This is when the soul path develops. You know, it's that final trimester before your arrival. And your soul sign, reading to listen to, is for Scorpio. And then add in the reading for your moon sign and your rising sign too. And if you don't know what those are, use the calculator below to find out. This week for Pisces, the moon transit your 10th, 11th and 12th houses. It brings a blend of work, focus, followed by social kind of societal matters and interaction followed by introspection so as the moon moves initially through your 10th house this is doing more work this is being driven by work or it's just having more work to do or a desire to make progress in your career it's about seeking recognition for your hard work or maybe you just take on new responsibilities or more responsibilities and then midweek as the moon enters your 11th house the energy shifts to a social focus. You might be hyper aware of people who think like you with regards to the world and the economy. You might be aware that some people don't think like you. This is all about shared goals and the pursuit of a network where it's the age-old find your tribe. Either you have the things in common with people or you do not. And this actually might come up as a bit of a struggle. And then finally, the moon moves through your 12th house. So this is all about downtime. This is about taking space for rest and reflection, recharging, getting away from all those people. 
And then with the Sun in Scorpio trying Saturn retrograde in your sign of Pisces, setting realistic goals is all about your personal growth and transformation. This trine is a great opportunity to focus on things like higher education, spiritual self-development, or anything that feels like it has a deeper sense of meaning. Saturn's influence is all about patience, patience with yourself. So meditation could be a very important thing. Maybe set a one-year meditation goal where you aim to complete X amount of meditations during that time or you just want to turn up to one meditation a week. Meditation can be multiple things. You can have active meditation as well as the kind of eyes closed meditation. Figuring out which one's best for you is simple. Try meditate regularly and if you fall asleep, not that one. As funny as that sounds, if you fall asleep, that is not meditation. You might need a walk as meditation, active meditation, or listening to a music, or listening to guided meditation, but setting some smart goals long term to incorporate things that bring you more patience and structure, help you make steady progress in your self-development. Now is a great time to map out those self-growth plans that contribute to your personal evolution. And then with Venus and Sagittarius squaring off Neptune retrograde in your sign of Pisces, be mindful of idealizing career opportunities or taking on things because you think you're going to get more pay for it because it's possible that you won't. You may feel inspired and okay about your career path, taking on things, rose-colored glasses, but Neptune's influence might make it difficult for you to see where you are being taken for granted. So if someone presents an exciting opportunity or just a regular opportunity, make sure to review the details first before you commit. This is a reminder to keep your feet on the ground and take things at face value instead of wishful thinking or imagining that you'll be getting more than you actually do. And don't overcommit yourself professionally, career-wise, taking on extra shift, taking on extra jobs, however it shows up. Don't overcommit yourself thinking that you will be repaid adequately because you might be left without in the end and that is it for your week ahead consider listening to the reading for your earth sign to get a little bit more from this the earth sign is the sign earth was in when you were born on it in heliocentric astrology it's the sign opposite yours on the wheel so this is virgo and then there's the reading for your soul sign too this is the sign 88 days before you were born where the sun was and it really symbolizes that third trimester before your arrival It's the switching on of the lights and the consciousness and it defines your life path and for you this sign is Sagittarius. And then also listen to the readings for your moon and rising sign too. If you don't know what those are, use the calculators below to find out. And that's it for this episode. Make sure you're following the show to get all the cool new medical episode updates, health, wellness, self-care, astrology. And until next time, bye! (laughs)